Hi everyone, I'm Michael Edson. I'm the Director of Web and New Media Strategy at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. Uh, I suspect many of you know that, and I know many of you in that room in Cyprus today. Uh, I wish I could be there with you. I'm very proud to know all of you, and very, very proud as a member of the human species of the work you're doing today, and the work you've done through your whole careers to make culture and scientific knowledge and the work of museums and libraries and archives uh, relevant and important and meaningful in society. Um, I think your Piana is one of the most important initiatives in the world today. Uh, as Harry Verwayan said so persuasively in at the uh, OK Festival in Helsinki last month, what you're doing shows the world that Europe can accomplish difficult, meaningful things if you work together and if you stick to your principles. That means a lot to us here in the States. It means a lot to people all over the world. So um, keep going. Uh, I said that I'm uh, with the Smithsonian Institution, but I'm not an official spokesperson for the Smithsonian today. Uh, I'm talking with you in my capacity as a private citizen who's been thinking a lot about the cultural commons and thinking a lot about how our knowledge institutions can thrive and do the important work they need to do in society in the digital age. Um, about a year ago, I read a really interesting article in Quora. Quora is an online website about asking and answering questions, and it's often full of surprises. And this article was called, um, What is it like to have an understanding of very advanced mathematics? Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, the, the answer, the best answer, the longest answer, was from an anonymous mathematician who talked about what it's like to think and work as a mathematician. And, and two ideas came out of that writing, that essay, that really blew me away. Uh, and I think they're relevant for you today. Um, the first is, and I'm going to read off of this, uh, off a cue card behind the camera, um, you are comfortable with feeling like you have no deep understanding of the problem you are studying. Indeed, when you do have a deep understanding, you've solved the problem and it's time to move on to something else. This makes the total time you spend in life reveling in your mastery of something quite brief. One of the main skills of research scientists of any type is knowing how to work comfortably and productively in a state of confusion. Um, that's definitely how I feel most of the time working with these issues that you're grappling with constructively today. Uh, I feel like I'm always working in a state of confusion and like I never have a complete grasp of what's going on. Uh, so I would say allow yourselves to uh, be comfortable in that state of confusion and uh, allow yourselves to resist the temptation to feel like you've mastered it because you probably haven't mastered whatever you're working on. Things are changing that quickly. Um, the second uh, uh, element, paragraph of this article about mathematics that interested me so much was, um, and I'll quote this also, um, you are often confident that something is true long before you have an airtight proof for it. This happens especially often in geometry. The main reason is that you have a large catalog of connections between concepts, and you can quickly intuit that if X were to be false, that would create tensions with other things you know to be true. And I love that idea of having a catalog of connections. I love that idea of having a catalog of connections, a catalog of concepts, and that working through difficult ideas and unknown ideas is a matter of, of making connections between those that, that, that catalog of concepts. And in the spirit of that idea, I want to give you five concepts to think about. I uh, want to assert five concepts that you can think about today, and you can think about uh, understanding the connections between them uh, in relation to your job at this workshop. Concept number one. I really do think that Europeana is one of the most important projects in the world today. In the 20th century, in the 19th and 18th and 17th century, for that matter, we made these wonderful institutions, these collections, these museums, libraries, archives, scientific organizations, knowledge institutions, and nobody told us we had to make these things. We felt compelled to make them 
as a human race, as a species. I think that these institutions and what they represent in our genome, it's part of our, part of our operating system, part of the operating system of society. And we made them out of the tools that we had available to us, out of the materials we had available to us then, bricks and mortar and iron and glass and big marble columns and, and magnificent spaces in the middle of our cities. Uh, and also quiet rooms, uh, dark rooms, um, uh, filled with shelves and drawers of magnificent and unrivaled examples of human creativity and insight and samples of the natural world, the scientific world. Um, but we have new tools now. We have very new tools now available to us now today that we didn't have three or four years ago, let alone 30 or 40 or 300 or 400 years ago. And it's really important that somebody figure out how to do the work that society expects us to do in our institutions with these new tools. Because the tools are, I won't say more powerful, but powerful and meaningful in a way that our old tools just were not. And I think that this concept of a commons and what Europeana is doing and stands for really paves the way more strongly than any other initiative I know of. So that's concept one. Concept two is um, Europeana won't succeed by trying to be great. I want you to resist the temptation, the, the incredible gravitational pull of trying to make Europeana the strongest, biggest, bestest, badassest portal in the world. Uh, most of the most of your success, I think, will come through making other people great by being a supporter of the passion and the enthusiasm and the inquiry and the intelligence and the verve of everyone else in the world. Um, I'm remembering a conversation I had with um, an online video portal. I think it was called SchoolTube. Uh, and they approached the Smithsonian wanting us to become involved in creating content for teachers and students. And our initial reaction was, oh, we're going to make the best two-minute videos that teachers will ever use. And I think when the end of the day came, most of us realized that the most powerful thing we could do was B-roll, was um, footage of George Washington, our famous uh, founding father's battle costume, or of the Washington Monument, or Dorothy's slippers, or resources that other people could use, teachers and students could use, to do their own work. So rather than manufacturing a complete vision of the future, or a complete vision of knowledge or creativity ourselves, and delivering it through our portal down a one-way pipe to a passive audience, maybe the most powerful thing we could do was to provide a platform, a very simple platform, that other people could use to be successful. Um, and I think there's a lot of wisdom and potential in that direction for your thinking. What can you do that will make your citizens, your countrymen and women, be more successful? Maybe you take a humble role and a back seat. Maybe you're just a simple platform that people use to come and get the resources that they need to use to weave, weave the tapestry they're building their lives with. Um, so that's number two. Number three is uh, there are a lot of ideas on the table. Um, I saw Harry's excellent briefing paper, Harry and staff and teams, excellent briefing paper. There are a lot of ideas on the table about what a commons is. Uh, and I want to assert that, that those ideas are not a fixed formula. They're more like the recipe for a, a, a soup or a stew or a southern Louisiana gumbo. Um, you can make substitutions. You don't need all the ingredients. You can use different ratios of them depending on what job you're trying to solve today or who your, your audience is. Um, so don't think too hierarchically or rigidly about if we don't do this, it can't be a commons. Um, um, I'm thinking about Italo Calvino's uh, book, Invisible Cities, and imagining many different kinds of cities, some impossible and some real. Um, not all commons have to be the same or follow the same mold. Um, and that leads me to uh, idea connection catalog number four, that there are certain words that you need to think critically about. You need to question your use of because they mean radically different things to different people. Um, the first is culture. 
I've noticed when I come to Europe very often, and this is true in the States as well, when we talk about culture, we talk about the opera. You know, we're thinking about the opera. We're thinking about cultural institutions. Um, I learned a new term, uh, SOBs, symphonies, uh, operas and ballets, SOBs, the, the SOBs. You're talking about institutions. And when you talk about serving culture, sometimes you're thinking without even really meaning to, you're thinking about, you're talking about institutions or governments providing services to other institutions that then provide culture for their citizens. That's not always the best use of that term or really what it means. I'm really interested in the person who's in their living room playing the harmonica or learning to play guitar or singing in a community choir or making art. Um, those individual makers and creators and imaginers uh, in, your, in your populations that you serve. Sometimes culture is about what they're doing. The institutions of the 20th century had a hard time finding and relating to those people. But now those people can find each other and they can find you. And that redefines that term maybe. The other is audience. Um, is your Piana's audience other institutions? Are they your 2200 partners? Or are they the citizens that get served. And then which sub-audience of those citizens? I think we're in an, in an inarguably long-tail environment where you have hundreds or thousands of niche audiences. So as you talk over, the, over today, be exceptionally clear about what you mean when you say the word audience. Who is that? Uh, another danger word is access. We're going to provide access. And um, access is not the same as use. It's not the same as sharing. Uh, access, usually in the parlance of museums and libraries and archives, means you can come and access our stuff on our terms through our pipe. And that maybe isn't the most productive way of thinking about access in terms of a cultural commons. Um, I think along that lines, we imagine the future as uh, having us be a hub still with a lot of spokes. People come to us to access the things we want them to do. Maybe the best role for us or for you is not as a hub surrounded by spokes, but as one of the endpoints, part of a network of peers. Uh, the last term I want you to think about is engagement, the term engagement. Often when we talk about engagement, we talk about you out there, the public, coming and being engaged with us, with our stuff on our terms. That's not what I think a 20-year-old would think engagement means today. Engagement is a two-way pipe. Engagement is peer-to-peer. -peer. Engagement is on terms your users are defining on their own without you every day. So think about the bias of that term engagement if that comes up. Um, the last point I want to bring up is <laughs> one, I'm, pride is not exactly the word, but I'm, I'm, very, I'm very proud to know that you all are there today as investors. You're investing your own time, your energy, the reputation of your institutions. You could be doing anything with this time today, but you're investing it in helping think through the European cultural commons. Um, think like investors. Where are you going to put your resources? When do you want payoff for that? When do you want benefits from that? Where do you want to be a month from now? Where do you want to be a year from now? Really press the urgency of that investor thinking. Um, um, I think there's so much you can do now. There's so much you can do in the short term. You've, many of you have heard me repeat something I heard somewhere else. Think big, start small, move fast, but move. You know, do what you can, but do it. And on that note, maybe I'll get back to my hurricane preparation. Um, it's Sunday. Things are starting to get cold here. The weather's coming from a strange direction. Probably as your workshop is happening, we'll be hunkered inside my house um, without electricity, uh, hoping that the roof doesn't blow off. So enjoy warm and sunny Cyprus. And uh, I'm just... I'm just thrilled. I'm overwhelmed and thrilled at the direction you're headed. And the rest of us, uh, the rest of the world is really cheering you on. So go get them. Thanks a lot.